Just be mindful when buying soy sauce. Um, if you have any gluten-free friends, you want to make sure that you buy the gluten-free kind. Um, and then, obviously, these are not gluten-free, but <laughs> your gluten-free friends can eat the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got the gigglies. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sue Chan. I do PR and marketing for a bunch of different chefs and restaurant groups. And when I'm not working hard for them, I love to cook at home. Tonight I'm having some friends over and instead of serving just the regular you know, cheese and crackers, we're going to serve dumplings. We're gonna do a shrimp and mango dumpling with an apricot dipping sauce. And yeah, I'm also gonna show you how to present them in a party setting. First, we're going to peel and devein the shrimp. You wanna take off the legs and then start from the top and just peel back. I love to buy my shrimp in Chinatown. It's a little bit difficult to navigate because you need to know where to go um, and no one really speaks English, but uh, it's really the best place to buy Asian ingredients. It's the widest selection, it's the cheapest prices. I was born in Taiwan, so Mandarin was my first language, uh, but I don't speak very good Mandarin, <laughs> but I try. Now we're gonna devein the shrimp. You just run your knife along the back of the shrimp and you'll see this gucky stuff is the digestive tract. So what I'd like to do is have a wet paper towel here to kind of help get the guck out. It's best to kind of rinse the shrimp after you devein it as well. And we're just gonna chop this up. As you're cutting it, you want some of the texture to still be there, so no need to mince the shrimp, but definitely cut some of the larger pieces. Okay, so we're done with that. So next I'm gonna show you how to cut a mango. The best way to tell whether or not it's ripe is by smelling the stem. It should smell like mango. This one smells like mango. It's great, actually, it smells delicious. Um, so to cut a mango, first you wanna slice off the sides because there is a seed down the middle, so you wanna avoid that when cutting. You just wanna make some slices down like this and then just go the other way, like a crisscross checkerboard and just scoop it out. I like the yellow mangoes mainly because of the texture and the flavor is a lot more mild than other types of mangoes. Now we're going to make the filling. Um, first I'm going to dump one teaspoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of cornstarch, juice of half a lime, one tablespoon of salt mixed together in a smaller bowl. And that's so everything dissolves properly. I'm just going to pour this in. A tablespoon of cilantro minced, two garlic cloves pushed through a garlic press, the zest of one lime, a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper, and then half a mango. I like to just mix it with my hands, just makes it a lot easier. Oh shit, I forgot the ginger. Shit. So act like I had already added it in. You wanna take a spoon, and you're just gonna use the spoon to peel the skin off like this. This is the best way, because you don't lose any ginger. Then you're just gonna take a microplane and grate it. You need one and a half teaspoons of ginger. And this is kind of hard work sometimes. I was supposed to put that in earlier. We're gonna save some of that grated ginger for the dipping sauce we're gonna make later. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish making my dumpling mixture. And then we are going to wrap the dumplings, which you will see is also very easy. Okay, so now for wrapping the dumplings, I'm gonna get a little spoonful of the filling, probably like half a tablespoon. And then you're gonna wet your finger and wet one side of the dumpling wrapper. Fold it over. Make sure that you press it so that no air bubbles are there and that's really sticking. You can fry it like this. Um, it's called the half moon shape. I, I like to make them a little bit more decorative and so just make a little bit of a fold. And you can keep on putting a little bit of water here so that it kind of sticks together. There, just put it aside. So you can definitely make your own wrappers. I prefer to use the store-bought versions just because I think that they do a better job of making them than I ever could. Um, but it's totally possible and the recipe itself is really easy. The difficult part is just making them super thin and the same size. This one is probably my favorite one. It's just nice and plump. I am gonna name him Bob. I love dogs with like human names. It's kind of like that, you know, food with human names. For these dumplings, I am making an apricot dipping sauce. It's kind of reminiscent of a duck sauce, which is a pretty traditional Chinese um, sauce that uses plums and apricots and peaches. So first, a third of a cup of apricot preserve. 
a tablespoon of black vinegar, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and then a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. Some of that grated ginger from earlier. You can use as much as you want. I'm using a teaspoon here. And then a clove of garlic push through a garlic press. You kind of want a thick consistency, so if you need to add more preserve, you should. So I'm actually gonna put the sauce now in the squeeze bottle. Black vinegar is similar to balsamic vinegar, and the best place to buy them is a Chinese supermarket. Now we're gonna fry the dumplings. Get a large pan. I'm really using non-stick pan. I don't know where mine went, so I'm using this pan instead. Um, you want to bring the oil up to a high heat. People typically use canola oil or peanut oil. I like to use olive oil just because it's a little bit healthier. We're first going to fry the bottoms for a couple minutes, and then we're going to pour a couple tablespoons of water into the pan, and then cover the pan so that the water steams the dumplings. And that'll ensure that one, you have a really crispy bottom, and two, the dumplings are all the way cooked through. So we're gonna turn down the heat a little bit. Sometimes the pan doesn't heat evenly when you have a shitty stove like mine. If you move them around, then you get a little bit more even of a crunch on the bottom. A lot of times when people make dumplings, the dumplings will stick to the pan. Two tricks to combat that are one, using a non-stick pan, and then two, just making sure that the oil is really hot before you put the dumplings in. You're looking for an even light to dark brown, like that's kind of perfect right there. Because you're mostly cooking the dumplings with the steaming method, and this is just to make sure that you get like a nice crunch on the bottom. Now, pour a little bit of water in. And then now you're just gonna wait for them to steam. And pretty much just wait until all the water has evaporated. Once the water has steamed off, um, you just want to cook it for a little bit longer just to get a little bit more of that crisp back. So see, that's what you want, like an even crispiness. And one way to make sure that they're done, just kind of touch them and if they bounce back, it means that the meat is cooked. Now we're on to the presentation portion of our show. So first I'm going to take the sauce that we made earlier. Um, I'm going to cut open the top of this just because, because of the, um, because <laughs> apricot preserve, um, it's really thick. So we just want to make sure that it can actually come out of the hole. Okay. These are Chinese soup spoons. Um, it's what, you know, you use to eat soup with at Chinese restaurants. They're pretty inexpensive in Chinatown. I'm just going to lay out a few of these. Put a little bit of sauce in each one. Trust me, people are gonna definitely want more sauce. And then we're just gonna place a dumpling on each spoon and then top with some scallions and cilantro. So you pretty much can just take one of these and... Oh, Actually, really good. <laughs> to get the recipe for my shrimp and mango dumplings, click the link right here. I think for the second recipe, you want to stop being so self-deprecating. 